Hello, this is Professor Behrang. Um, I am here with another video, um, and the subject is uh, thermodynamics, is flow work. Uh, flow work is something that shows up in Bernoulli equation. It shows up in the first law of thermodynamics. In fact, in the first law, uh, if you remember, you combine flow work with internal energy, and you call it enthalpy. So um, we're going to talk about where it comes from. And uh, we derive the equation. It's very simple. This is going to be a short video. But um, I remember when I took thermodynamics back in, I guess the year was 2000, um, I had a hard time understanding flow work. I mean, I didn't have a hard time understanding kinetic energy and potential energy in the first love. But flow work didn't come, you know, naturally to me. And uh, after teaching, you know, uh, you know thermal fluids for for many years, I noticed students also have the same problem. Uh, so hopefully this video is going to just resolve that issue for you. So before I start, make sure to subscribe to this channel as I upload videos in the area of thermal fluids. Now, uh, flow work is work, right? So we have to go back to the definition of work, the definition of the Newtonian definition of work. So the definition of work is if you have a force and the force moves a certain distance, you have accomplished work. That's what it is. In fact, it's the integral of F dot dx, the dot product of F and distance is work. Work is a scalar. It's The unit is joules, right? So let's take a look at the formula. Then we're going to look at the Bernoulli equation and the first law of thermodynamics. Then we're going to derive it real quick. So this is the definition of work, according to what you have learned. W is the integral of f dot dx. You know, imagine that there is an object, and you move that object in the x direction, and the force on it is f. Very simple. Also, this means if w is the integral of f dot dx, it's a dot product of force, which is a ve vector, and dx is also a vector. If that's the case, dw is basically f dot dx, right? That that makes sense. And also we know there is power. Power, which is w dot, is dw over dt. Oh, we already have dw. dw is um, you know f dot dx. So dw over dt, which is supposed to be w dot, which is supposed to be power if f dot dx, like this, these vectors over dt, basically. And we already know that uh, if you're dealing with a one-dimensional case, dx over dt is velocity, right? This thing is velocity in the x direction. Now, for, for simplicity, I'm just uh, giving the, you the example of a 1d, you know, moving f. It could be 3d also, so these equations are always correct, but just for simplicity. Now, uh, if that's the case, uh, you can rewrite W dot as power equals force dot product velocity, which is probably your familiar um, with um, maybe in uh, you learn this in, I don't know, dynamics or thermodynamics, somewhere, somewhere you have seen physics, whatever. You have seen this equation before. The dot product of force and velocity is the power if the object is moving and that force is causing it to move basically, right? Now, keep this in mind. Let's take a look at the concept of flow work in thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. Where does it show up? It shows up um, two cases. I mean, more than two cases. It shows up in exergy everywhere else, but two cases uh, that you see them a lot. And that's Bernoulli equation and um, the first law of thermodynamics. You can derive Bernoulli equation from the first law of thermodynamics. Anyway. So let's just call it the first law of thermodynamics. Now, this term in fluid mechanics, for example, this is how you see float work. Fluid mechanics, we say Bernoulli equation on a single, single streamline from point one to point two is if this is a streamline, right? What do you do? If it is... Uh, a, an inviscid flow or inviscid Newtonian flow, inviscid flow in this case, and there is no heat addition in the process. So Bernoulli equation is P1 over rho G, right? Plus 
v1 squared over 2g plus z1 equals p2 over rho g plus v2 squared over 2g plus z2, right? This is what you are familiar with. It is also known as the Bernoulli equation. Okay, um, now which one is the flow work then? Uh, well, we need to rewrite this equation in terms of joules, because this equation right now is not in terms of joules. This equation is in terms of meters right now. The unit of this equation is, is meters right now. So in order to uh, convert this to joules or joules per kilogram, if I multiply both sides of this equation by G, right? Um, I'm going to use a different color. If I multiply both sides of this by G, then the equation, the unit of equation becomes joules per kilogram. You can just sit down and, you know, derive the units and you realize, oh, that's correct. It becomes joules per kilogram. So then you can rewrite the Bernoulli equation as P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus G Z1 equals P2 over rho G, not rho G, over just rho, plus V2 squared over 2 plus G Z2, like this. The unit of this now is joules per kilogram. Okay, now I got some something that I can call work. This has the unit of joules per kilogram. Work per unit of mass. Okay, that's great. Now, what is P1 over rho? Well, I can rewrite this as P1 times the specific volume because specific volume is also one over density, isn't it? I can... Uh, if you look at the first law of thermodynamics, P1 times V also shows up in the first law of thermodynamics, which we call it the flow work. This is the same thing, this is flow work. So what is it in the first law of thermodynamics? Okay, let's rewrite the first law of thermodynamics. In, so let's see what we can get out of that. First law of thermodynamics. The general form is Q dot net minus W dot net plus M dot then h in, m dot in, h in, right, plus v in squared over 2, plus g z in, minus m dot out, h out, v out squared over 2, plus g z out equals the change of energy in the control volume over time. Um, I already have a video, an extensive video on the, the first law of thermodynamics. I, I think it was actually the first video I uploaded on this channel. But uh, I will redo it because um, there are still a lot of questions about the first law of thermodynamics and where these terms come from. Now, where is the flow work? Flow work is inside enthalpy. In fact, when you say enthalpy, H, equals U, internal energy, plus PV. So... Um, it's one of those terms. Now, our next step is that, okay, it seems like flow work shows up in the Bernoulli equation and enthalpy also. Because um, when you look at the streamline in fluid mechanics, if Bernoulli equation says, if you don't add any energy to the system, if there is no viscous effects, you're not wasting energy, you're not adding heat, no friction, no turbine in between, no pump, nothing to add energy to the fluid or extract energy from it, basically from point one to point two, mechanical energy from point one to point two has to stay the same. And mechanical energy, what constitutes mechanical energy is the kinetic energy, this term that we have, that's the kinetic energy, right? And then we have the potential energy, this term, and we also added flow work to it. This guy is flow work. And uh, why do we have flow work? Because when we when we talk about objects, regular objects, you know, uh, we don't talk about flow work, but now we're dealing with fluids. Now we are going to take a look at fluid in a control volume to understand the concept of flow work that it is included in Bernoulli equation in the first law of thermodynamics, showing up in the enthalpy term. And then we're going to relate it to the concept of work, the Newtonian definition of work, and eventually power. And we're going to derive 
that simple P times V or P over rho equation out of it. It's very simple, very, very simple like that. All right, so let's take a look at a simple control volume where fluid is moving, like a pipe, like a section of the pipe or something, right? So let's do that. Imagine that uh, you are dealing with a section of a pipe. So let's just say we have a section of a pipe like this. This is a section of a pipe, right? And the fluid is going in and is coming out. At the inlet, again, just for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm just using one-dimensional um, examples, right? So at the inlet, we have P at the inlet, let's call it P1, right? And uh, at the outlet, we have P2, like this. Of course, when it comes to pressure, so what I'm showing here is velocity, V1 and V2. So let me show pressure with a different color because pressure um, always um, looks different. So I'm going to show pressure with red because pressure is always inwards. When it comes to pressure, that's how you show it. So this is P1 and this is P2. Right, so the 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 dark the, the black lines are velocity basically, and the red lines are uh, pressure. Pressure is a scale. Pressure is not a vector, but the force caused by pressure is a vector. Right. So if you multiply that force, that pressure by the area at the inlet, or you multiply the pressure P two by the area at the outlet, then you actually have the magnitude of force, the vector of the force. Right. So that's what it is. Now, um, speaking of that, let me sh use a different color. It's the blue. Um, so if I want to look at if the pressure is changing from inlet to the outlet, and we know in fluid mechanics, uh, you know, in the pipe, down the pipe, uh, you always have change in pressure. In fact, if you don't have pressure gradient in pipes, you don't have any flow. That's how it works for internal flow. For external flow, it is possible not to have pressure gradient and you can still have flow. Like um, like a fan that you put in a room or something. The pressure doesn't change that much, but you still have a flow. But for internal flow, it's impossible not to have pressure gradient and have a flow. You must have a flow. So if pressure is changing, what's going to happen here? If pressure is changing, basically there is a net amount of force between the inlet and the outlet. Because if the pressure P1 and P2 are the same, okay, so they just cancel each other out if the area is also the same. But um, if the pressure is changing, even if the area stays the same, there's a net amount of force that is moving. Why do I say it's moving? Because there is velocity. So a net amount of force is moving, and that net amount of force comes from the pressure difference, this side and this side. The net value of that pressure causes that net amount of force that is moving. Why is it moving? Because there is velocity, because flow moves through the control volume at the, from the inlet to the outlet. Okay, so that's where flow work comes from. I understand the concept. What's the formula for it? Here's what we're going to define. We say, listen, we can say at the inlet, for example, what do we got at the inlet? At the inlet, this is what I have. At the inlet, I have um, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is V1 squared over 2G. If you want to write it in terms of um, joules per kilogram, that would be V1 squared over 2. So let's do it in terms of joules per kilogram, like this. Okay, I understand it. And if I want to write the, uh, I don't know, the, the potential energy, potential energy would be G, Z1. Same case for the outlet. You can write V2 squared over 2 or G, Z2. Okay, I get it. How do I write flow work, though, in terms of joules per kilogram? Now we're going to use that formula of force times velocity, which gives us power. If I find the power of flow work, which I can right now, and divided by the mass flow rate, I get joules per kilogram. So I have solved the problem. So flow work that I'm looking for, flow work, what is it at the inlet? I would say at the inlet flow work would be, flow work, I'm going to write it one more time. Flow work would be 
basically the W dot at the inlet or at the outlet over M dot. So I can find it in terms of joules per kilogram. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, how do I find W dot then? W dot would be the force at the inlet times velocity at the inlet. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So what is force then? Force would be pressure times the area. Okay, I got it. Times velocity. That's W dot. What is M dot though? In fluid mechanics for, you know, simple 1D flow, you know, that is rho V A. Let's see what we ended up with. So flow work that is supposed to be W dot over M dot becomes pressure times area times velocity over rho V A. So A and V get canceled, and we're going to end up with P over rho, in other words, P times V, specific volume, and the unit of this is joules per kilogram, which shows up in Bernoulli equation and the first law of thermodynamics. That sounds like magic, but now you get the concept of it, that uh, where it comes from. So uh, that's it for today, and I uh, hope you learned something from this. And uh, one more time, if you actually learned something from this, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And uh, I also have a, uh, a climbing channel, a mountain climbing channel, that is called the Climbing Cadillac. And uh, if you're interested, if you are into hiking and climbing mountains, you can check out that channel also. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.